Sure. My name is Stephen Lake. I'm one of the co-founders of Thalmic Labs. Um, Thalmic was founded in 2012 to develop a next generation human computer interface, which we call the Mayo. So the Mayo works by uh, sensing the electrical signals from the muscles in your forearm and then translating that to inputs that a computer or mobile device can understand. So all of those movements of your fingers, your hands, the gestures you make, we can wirelessly plug those into your computer or other digital device and allow you to control them completely in free space in 3D. You're based out of Canada. Now, can yeah. you describe how you came up? <laughs> yeah, so myself and the two other co-founders were classmates at the University of Waterloo, um, which is located an hour from Toronto in southern Ontario. Um, we studied something called mechatronics engineering. So mechatronics combines electrical, mechanical, system design, software engineering, um, a little bit of computer science and things like that. Very kind of broad interdisciplinary program um, where you can specialize in different areas. And so three of us had gone really different routes, but had kind of worked in these areas of advanced interfaces, wearable devices, robotics, and things like that. And so while in undergrad, um, myself and Matthew, one of the co-founders, had developed a, an assistive device. It was a wearable device for the blind to help them navigate. Um, it used lasers to detect obstacles and would translate that into tactile feedback. So blind people could navigate by feeling their way around, essentially. And the technology itself is not related to the Mayo today, but it got us very interested in this question of how could we more closely connect the digital and the real worlds and sort of merge those two together. Like how could we use technology to, or blur the line between us as humans and technology? And so just after graduating, uh, literally a week out of class, we moved into an office down the road from the university and began working on the first prototype of the Mayo. So we announced a little while ago that we will support using two devices at once, uh, meaning you can build immersive applications that take advantage of having you know, both hands. Um, and so you can imagine applications like in virtual reality with the Rift, for example, where you have both hands in the environment as well. Um, so that'll be possible. Um, I think the other question you had was around kind of building on top of the Mayo as a platform. Mm -hmm. And so one of the, the interesting areas now is now that new hardware interfaces and platforms like the Mayo are available is what will software developers do to take full advantage of that. And so, you know, today we can make it work with existing applications, but those applications are often designed for traditional input mode. So a touch screen, a keyboard, a mouse, maybe a game controller, things like that. And so while they're, they're going to be different to use with the Mayo and, you know, in some ways better, they're not necessarily built from the ground up to take full advantage of a new, like, three-dimensional interface. And so what's really exciting, I think, is that as new software developers or as new applications are developed that really take advantage of that new mode of interaction, um, you know, what will happen then and, and what those new paradigms will look like. And so it's, it's cool to see that there's now all kinds of developers, right from individuals to um, studios and companies that are, are building on top of this. And, uh, we've actually had companies here in Waterloo starting with the sole purpose of building software on top of the Mayo. Yeah, so there, there's lots happening right now, and it's exciting because it's a new area, I think, and um, there's been rapid evolution of devices. And so what we've seen in the market right now essentially is two, maybe three classes of device. So we have fitness tracking on one hand, which is like your Nike Fuel Bands, your Job One Up, your Fitbits, etc. Generally accelerometers and a battery, maybe a wireless module um, worn on the wrist tells you steps, things like that. The other big segment right now is kind of um, wrist device wrist, um, either watches or notification devices. So kind of smart watches, if you like. Some of those are extensions of your phone, like the Pebble. Other ones are phones, you know, totally contained in the watch itself. Um, that's, you know, a big emerging area for, for this year and next. And we're gonna see a lot of growth there with all the major consumer electronic companies uh, introducing products, essentially. Um, then there's kind of devices in the middle of those two. So it's like watches with health and fitness functions as well. Um, those are kind of the existing landscape. You see a couple of products sitting outside of there, you know, Google's Glass is one example, our product's one example that don't quite fit in those, those main categories right now and are, are other still wearable devices, but outside of the two mainstream, you know, sectors today. Yeah, so the device costs um, currently 149 for pre-order. Actual prices, once we start shipping, will go up a little bit from there. Um, the first units will be shipping end of this year. Current pre-orders now are shipping early 2014, so we've sold out the first batches at this point. Um, but yeah, we're excited to get the first ones in the mail. Thank you. Thank you.